Hey Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Thanks for watching another weekly video. Let's get right into it. All right, this video is about welding some little thick aluminum castings to some threaded aluminum fittings. It's a collaboration video between myself and Roy Crumrine. Roy and I have done other videos together in the past. And so he's doing these at his shop, and I'm mocking up some arc shots to kind of mix in to make the video more interesting for my shop. Roy and I are also working together these days on the Welding Tips and Tricks podcast, along with Jonathan Lewis. It's a weekly welding podcast. We talk about welding topics one week, then the next week we'll interview a guest. Uh, so far we've had super interesting guests on, guys with just certain skill sets like TIG welding aluminum or heavy equipment repair. Uh, a guy that builds monster trucks, Mike Zancanato, a bike builder. We had him on recently. I just find it very interesting. I'm learning a ton. I think you probably will too. You can find it at iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and also Libsyn.com and probably a few other places. So take a listen and uh, let me know what you think. Roy's getting some tack welds on here now using a standard number five cup. And oftentimes when you're doing thick aluminum as soon as you light up on it if it's cold you're gonna see some fine porosity and that usually goes away once the part warms up so what preheating does it drives off moisture and it slows the cooling rate and generally helps prevent porosity on thick aluminum we're only heating this up to 150 to 200 just about one revolution on the turntable with a handheld propane or map gas torch that does the trick you don't want to heat aluminum up too hot because you, you, you tend to start losing properties and it kind of can look grainy as if it cools too slowly. Always again using a number five standard cup. That's his go-to cup for aluminum. You can tell a little difference in the sound here. I'm using a little lower AC frequency. I'm using only about 80 hertz. Roy sounds like he was using about 120, maybe a little bit more than that. But on a turntable, it's it's just fun. You can prop like this, and you can get a really consistent bead. Now, you notice that Roy has got a nice prop arm to prop both hands on, both torch hand and filler wire hand. And if you've got a lot of parts like this, like oftentimes he'll take in orders doing 50, 100, even sometimes 500 parts, and you don't want to freehand that stuff. You want to, You want it to look the same every time. You want to be not so tired at the end of the run. So having a prop like this comes in super handy. Now in a minute, I'm going to talk about props. I'm going to talk about a store-bought prop. I'm going to show you how Roy built his prop set up here and a few other things. This is this a guy sent me this. His name is Bill Ellert at wcedesigns.com. This is a this is his product. He calls it a steady rest. It's got a little magnetic base on there like you would see on a magnetic base for a machinist dial caliper or something like that. And so you do flip the switch and it it magnet it sticks to stuff that's that's magnetic. You got a little cam lock thing here that raises up and down and, and it locks like a bicycle seat. And Anyway, he sent it to me and asked me if I'd try it out and give him some feedback on it. And so I'm including it in this video. You can see the weld there. just kind of gives you an idea of the care that he puts into the, the overall product. It's a quality product. You can find it at wcedesigns.com. So I'm just going to give it a go here and show you how this might work. I'm going to clamp it right to this little sheet metal box. It's the controller box on my turntable. And I'm just going to find a place that feels good where I can prop and hold a torch steady like that. That would work really good for me. Flick over the magnetic switch and now it's kind of sort of locked into place. The thicker the metal the better when you're talking about magnet, uh, magnet bases like this. I, I set the height, lock it over, and now I've got a nice little nice little steady rest. So also going to talk a little bit about how would you determine the speed on a turntable job like this. A lot of times you'll get a part and you'll get a one or a one-off part. You still want to use a turntable on it because you want it to really look nice. How do you determine the speed? This is the way I do it. I get a piece of tape. This is just painter's tape. Put it on a scale or a ruler and I mark off eighth inch increments. Now if you're metric you could go three millimeter would be close enough. And then I turn to set the turntable to where I get about 
one eighth of an inch per second. All right, so thousand one, thousand two, thousand three, pretty close. That gets me right in the ballpark. Doesn't matter if the part is an inch in diameter or six inches in diameter. Using a piece of tape with those little increments on there gets me right in the ballpark every time. All right, I'm figuring out now a way that I can kind of do what Roy was doing and kind of prop with both hands here, my filler rod hand as well as my torch hand. And there's already a bead on there. That was what I used to capture the arc shots earlier to kind of mix in with the video to make it a little more interesting. I'm just going to run another bead here real quick just to show how propping on this little this little rest comes in handy. You know, I didn't have to go th jump through any... Uh, hoops or go through any gymnastics to get a prop set up. I just flicked over the magnetic base and uh, good to go. Now you can you can get sort of comfortable and figure out ways to hold your hands on a job like this and get to where you can pretty much look like a machine. This is my first run here so I haven't got quite things haven't got things exactly dialed in yet but pretty good. Let's let's look now at how Roy built his if you're into making something like this for yourself. You can use it on a turntable or you can use it on long runs, make that long horizontal glide, and it really comes in handy. Roy used inch and a half square tubing, eighth inch wall, milled a little flat spot where he drilled a hole there for to just weld nuts. There's not really enough material to get much threads on if you want to use a, a tap. So he just welded nuts on. Use 309 filler metal because the base plate was basically carbon steel welded to a stainless steel uh, square tubing and 309 is is a great rod to use for welding carbon steel to stainless steel and you can see there he just welded a nut where he had that little flat spot that's his base that's the base for the upright round stock and the round stock is just a piece of in inch and an eighth round tubing inch and an eighth outside diameter whatever size you use you just need to make sure that you have just a little bit of slop in it you don't want to use something that's really really a tight fit those the bolts will will take care of the rest you want it kind of loose in this case he used inch and an eighth round tubing worked out really well inside of inch and a half square tubing now you could use this for a lot of things but propping on this turntable part worked really well with that all right that wraps it up thanks so much for watching